Everybody good? All right, fire away. So five practices in, what are your thoughts about your unit in general? Um, I think we've made a lot of progress. I think we've done a really, really good job of uh, teaching them and making them understand the importance of uh, fundamentals. You know, a lot of people can get so much, and we've talked about this before, right? So many people can get so into the scheme and all that uh, that you, you lose fundamentals, and we haven't done that. We've, I think we've gotten better. I think five days, it's really starting to show up. Like I tell them, when we do something out there on a drill, if it's not showing up in 11 on 11, either we're not teaching the right or you don't understand what we want you to do. Because that's the whole purpose of the drills. But the drills are starting to, uh, the accumulation of, of the drills are starting to come, come alive. I'm seeing it in practice, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. What are some of the areas of fundamentals that needed a lot of work that you think have made, you guys have made a lot of progress with? Tackling, number one, we have emphasized that ad nauseum. So it's been tackling, how we approach tackles, how we finish tackles, uh, body position wise, uh, you know, where we belong on tackles. And um, so that's been number one. The other is just striking blocks and playing gaps and, uh, you know, just playing the defense the way the defense was, uh, was designed. And so, you know, we don't, you know, again, it's not about guruing up all these defenses. It's us being able to get off blocks, strike blocks, um, you know, never stay blocked, tackle in open space, all of those things, creating and forcing turnovers, which we work today, uh, that are going to really make us, you know, defensively where you get us where we need to be. Gene, since last fall, Mac has talked about the need for improved leadership. What does leadership mean to you, and have you seen growth in that area this offseason? Yeah, uh, I think there's been tremendous growth, and and you know, leadership is simply. We don't need leadership when things are going great, right? We, we need great leadership all the time, but you certainly need it uh, when things aren't going good. And we talk to them about that. We talk to them about body language. We talked about to talk to them about how to respond. Uh, you know, we talk about those things. And like I told them the other day, we don't ever play uh, to circumstances. We play to standards, and that's that's it, right? It's like you know, standards over circumstances, right? We always play to standards, and we don't worry about whether the Offense just, you know, scored a 60-yard touchdown, or the off, or we just got an interception. The standard is the same on the next play, uh, and that's hard for humans to do, right? Because we're all so emotional, and we all respond and react to our circumstances. But in this game, if you're going to be good, you have to have short memories when you do something good and bad, and you need to respond right. So it's not about how you play to a circumstance; it's to a standard. Who are some of those leaders kind of stepping up you've seen emerge in the spring and now in the beginning of camp? Yeah, uh, a lot of them. Uh, I'm really proud of starting with the linebackers who are kind of in the middle of the defense where they're kind of hard and soul. I think Power and Set have done a great job of stepping up. I think there's a lot of defensive linemen uh, that really stepped up in terms of leaders by the way they play. Uh, I think Noah uh, Taylor and uh, Chris Collins have done a great job of that. I think Miles Murphy. Um, there's a lot of guys down there in the interior, and then I'm going to tell you, there's there's some leadership. Geo Biggers has done a great job in the secondary, with really trying to tie things together and really really get the communication uh, elements that we need. Um, so uh, really happy with that because it's going to take a village to lead, right? As, you know, so we're, we're trying to get more than one, and right now they're working in that direction, and uh, we need to continue to do that. You mentioned uh, Noah and Chris Collins. Can you? Tell us exactly what the Jack position is, in your words, new position for, for UC fans. For it us. is. It's a new position. Uh, you know, it's a, it's basically an edge rusher, uh, and it's got the, he's got the ability to drop uh, and be a coverage guy as well. Uh, but his main job is to set the edges of the defense, meaning nothing gets outside of him. Uh, it, his run description on uh, his this job description on run is setting the edge of the defense and get the ball turned back outside or inside, and then when it's when it's time to rush a passer, we got to get some mileage out of these guys as pass rushers. We put a premium since the day I got here on being able to expect the passer with a four-man pass rush. We're not going to live in the pressure world to be able to try to bring a guy down. Right? We have really, really big, athletic, good frames up front, and we got to let those big guys work. Uh, so Jack is part of that front four, and they all have to learn the importance of uh, you know, generating four man pass rush. So. And we, sorry, and we talked to Chris two days ago. How, how is he progressed? What do you see out of Chris? Great. Great. He's, he's so smart. Uh, he could coach this whole defense right now. It's amazing. Uh, just a coach on the field, really, really smart. Great run stopper, really getting better on his pass rush stuff. Uh, I'm just really proud of him. I think he's really, really done well. He's an older guy that gets it, and he's great for our defense, and he's great for our room.
Is your voice that. not in shape? It's yet? not in shape yet. <laughs> We're on day six, and I've still and I've still lost it. Jeremy's supposed to give me some throat drops, but he screwed me on the bus. <laughs> Blaming Jeremy again. Yes, exactly. Jeremy, Jeremy's slacking, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, what is I know we've talked to you a lot about when you were out of it and thinking about getting back in or not thinking about getting in, or, you know, just right. staying connected to the game. But like, when you thought, when you, when you were coming back in and you, I don't know, were doing some self scouting, I'm guessing, maybe, was there anything about your coaching style from before that you thought, I kind of should just get rid of that because it's not, it doesn't work anymore? Like, or it's not applicable. Maybe right. it doesn't work isn't the best way to say it. But right. is there anything you wanted to just change about your, individual coaching style or no tweak? no I've, I've done it the same way for 30 something years and I'm not changing um, man I've been blessed with a lot of really good players and I've been blessed to have a lot of really good defenses so it's not broke don't fix it right so you know, my personal style is if somebody says what's your style my style is authentic I am who I am and I'm not changing so the players know that everybody knows that uh, so I don't feel like I had to reflect on that. Did I have to reflect on some things to X and O wise that we might need to recalibrate? Absolutely, and we've done that. As far as my personal coaching style, no. Another one of your what's the big, go ahead. Good. Or well, X and O wise, what's the big difference? You know, it's come back. Uh, no, we're doing a lot of the same things. It's just you know we've, I think we've expanded the flexibility of the defense to be able to do you know some other other things because you know this day and age the game even from six years ago five years ago has even changed right. There's just so much of an RPO world and things of that nature that was just coming in there a good bit and we definitely had to play it. But now it's you know you play our offense I mean you're playing playing a lot so and a lot of guys you're playing a lot in this league so. Uh, more geared towards adjusting and adapting to what offenses are giving you yep. now in terms of any wholesale change. An another element of your style, some of the guys have talked about, is that when you first walked into a defensive meeting room, you said, feel the floor, eyes straight ahead, and it's a constant. They said it commanded immediate respect for you. Where does that come from in your history? And, and how, do you, how do you see a difference with a group that maybe didn't have that before, reacting to your style immediately being so different? You know, I just told them it's a hard game, and you know to be great at the game you have to focus. And you know everything's about respect, right? It's not about respecting me. It's about just respecting the game. It's respecting the process. It's respecting the things that you have to do to be great. You know, so when we start meetings, I want everybody focused. I want everybody intent. I want everybody ready and giving me body posture that says I'm ready to learn. You know, it's just like anything. I tell them if you come into my office and you want to talk to me, and my eyes are on the ground and my head's down and I'm kicking my kicking the bottom of my, my chair, the nonverbal is I don't really care what you're saying to me. So that's not okay. It's disrespectful. So we talk about respecting everybody, right? Respecting the game, respecting the process, respecting everything that we're trying to do. And so it's not trying to be militant. It's trying to get them to understand that if you want to be great at something, there's got to be great intent. And that's, that's kind of how we start everything every day. Earlier in the summer, you talked about removing the gray as one of your like main goals for the defense. Do you think having improved leadership, as Mac has said, removing the gray, do you think those sort of go hand in hand? Yes, they do. They, they really do. I think our leaders have been great. When I, they're great sounding boards. I listen to the players. I listen to the players. What do you understand? What do you not understand? I need to teach you. My job, our jobs, is to teach you, and we have to remove the gray. What do you not understand? And that's how we communicate. And so, you know, removing the gray is huge because the leaders of the defense will come up to me immediately and say, which I think we're not, we're not real clear on this, or we're not real clear on that, and we can clear it up, right? So I think they all kind of intertwine and, you know, mix together. Mac has said a couple times in recent weeks, this might be the best staff he's ever assembled, and said the other day that the staff has tremendous chemistry. What is the staff having tremendous chemistry? What does that look like to you? Uh, it looks like everybody is, is uh, aligned. You know, when you say anything, you know, I've owned businesses before, right? And everything's got to be aligned. So, you know, from Coach Brown, uh, from Bubba on down, everything's about alignment. And when staffs are aligned, that means that, you know, everybody is trying to do the best thing for the team. It's not about, I want my position to be great. Yeah, you want your position to be great, but what do I got to do in practice? Offense working with defense. Phil, what do you need? Gene, what do you need? What can we give you? Phil, I don't need to see that today. Can you back off on that, Gene? That's a little bit too much for me today. Can we hold off on that? It's working together, right? That's what everything's about. So when you're aligned and everybody is, 
in one direction right now and all they care about is the best thing for the team and winning, then you're aligned. So I think that uh, what Mac was probably referring to is I feel like we have great alignment right now. Gene, how much film from last season or even before that on this defense did you watch coming in? Does that even matter? Like it does what? matter. It doesn't matter about scheme. It matters about effort. It matters about body language when things weren't good. It matters about how we tackled in space. It matters about how we executed uh, techniques. Uh, a lot of techniques are carry over every, you know, coverages are coverages, right? So there was a lot of film watching because we had to find out uh, when you talk about working techniques and you work fundamentals, what are we not good at? I mean, how do I work when I don't even know what we're not good at? So that's kind of where we started. So yes, we've watched a ton of that film. Was that a starting point, I guess? Like maybe for you and just your process of it was getting you here? Absolutely a starting point. Absolutely. Um, it matters who plays hard. It matters who loves the game. It matters you know, uh, when it comes to correcting issues that you see, right? Not just with individuals, but you know, as a, as a scheme, right? As a, as a team. So uh, we, we certainly spent a lot of time on that. What are some goals you have for the guys over the next 10 or so days? We have to improve every day. It's the compound effect. So I'll tell you about the compound effect before I even tell them, right? It's doing small, little, seemingly insignificant things every day, and you wake up one day and it's amazing. So if you take a penny and you double it every day for 30 days, you're over $5 million. That would be the analogy, right? A penny doesn't seem like much, but after 10, 15 days, you only got about four grand. But after 30 days, you got five million. So that's a compound effect. I just taught you guys something, today, right? But that's what we're, that's how we feel, right? Every day, every day, small, seemingly insignificant things every day that help you be a better player. Is it hard not to compare yourself right now to where you came in to Carolina seven years ago? Is it absolutely hard? no? It's not helping. Me. It is absolutely that is so in the distance. Right? That is has nothing to do with it. I don't think about that. That's not. This is new guys, this is new group, this is a new challenge, a new exciting move for me. And so that's a distant memory and I loved every minute of it. I love the kids we coached, but that never comes into my, into my mind. Cedric Gray said he loves the message that you gave early on saying, I want you guys to be really good at five things and not okay at 15. Do you think that kind of relieves some of the pressure from them of not having to have this broad scope of stuff, just narrow down their focus and they know what their job is every time the ball snapped? I, I think that's that's what creates good defense, right? Indecision creates bad defense. Bad communication, when you're not sure what's going on because you have a lot too much in there, that creates bad defense. And then it doesn't allow you to be in positions to tackle and make plays, right? You're one, just, you know, you're, and we talk about searching for inches all around us, right? When you see a guy miss a tackle right now because he has only one arm out, if he were to change that by moving over this far because he understood where he needed to be, then that tackle might be a four-yard gain instead of a 30-yard gain. So there's inches all around us that we're trying to find, and that's a daily challenge. You hear every every preseason, and this defense line's got two deep, three deep. You always hear the hype of, of how deep every position group is. It does seem like on the defensive line, you'll have the bodies. You've recruited well there. Um, how good do you think this defense line will be? What do you like out of them so far? Any players standing out in those three questions? But, I think they can be as good as they want to be. Uh, I think they have a lot of talent. They got big frames. Uh, I think that if they'll just keep pressing and learning and not being okay with being okay, I think I, they got a chance to be really good. And so there's some great leaders that I think are being developed down there. Um, but it's all about outworking the opponent. It's all about outworking. You know, we, when we talk about pass rush, you want to be great pass rushers, you got to outwork the protector, right? So, you know, those are the things that we're always talking to you guys about. I think they got a chance to be really, really good. I think they got a chance and should be the focal point starting point of this defense. If we get them to play right, they will be. Um, but I think they can be as good as they want to be. Is there a couple players who really jump out to you? That oh, there's a bunch. I mean, Miles has done great. Dez has done great. Um, KJ, um, um, you know, the outside guys with, you know, Kent, uh, this first time I ever coached, we're up. Ruck's been hurt, right? He's been great. You know, Chris and Noah, you got to include in that group. And I'm probably leaving somebody out mistakenly. I know they'll probably be mad if they watch this. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm proud of a lot of them. KJ's been hurt this whole time here. Is he really a guy that can 
Well, he's really, healthy and it's looking good. He's been healthy and he's really, you know, it's been baby steps and he's really been growing. Uh, there's no question in my mind he can be a, you know, a good player and really, really help us. Uh, and then he, you know, he needs to keep coming on, right? So he's got a chance. How do you go about trying to deploy those guys on the D-line, Gene? Do you, do, I mean, is it as simple as saying, like, give me all you got for 10 plays and come out? We'll get somebody else in there. I mean, do you? Sometimes there's some is. sort of a plan oh, that you're okay. trying to work up. Well, about? Has to be a plan. Just I mean, so every week, Coach Cross and I will talk and sit down and, and really, you know, just kind of formulate a plan. What does this look like, right? So I don't want to get done with a game and one of our defensive linemen played 80 plays. That's on us. So that should never happen. So we want to have the right amount of plays designated for each guy, and with a plus or minus three or four plays. You know, you hope you hit that window, and we track it. We track it every game. We call it a pitch count. It's a pitch count. And starting with those D linemen, man, the game is so hard for those guys because it's everything's so east and west, and they're running and running and running. What we'd like to be able to say is no matter what happens in the second series, boom, you go. No matter what happens in the third series, you go. Oh, the ball's on the five going in? Doesn't matter. Y'all go. That's called you're with the ones. We believe you, you know, you're, you're a starter. And but there's only four positions to start, right? So we'd like to have eight, and then we'd like to have ten. To be able to say it doesn't matter where the ball is on the field, we need you in. So that's what we're trying to get to. How have uh, Day Day and Jaquarius has been looking on um, their recoveries? I think Day Day's making, uh, making progress. Um, it's baby steps. Uh, JQ, we're still kind of bringing along. Uh, hasn't done a lot uh, in camp. He's in all the meetings, learning, and you know, paying attention to what's going on as far as physical stuff. Um, you know, he just he hasn't done a whole lot. But I think Day Day, we're watching him. We got We can't be dumb, tough with him, and push him in there and make him, you know, do something that he's not ready for. Uh, but he's he's gotten better. To me, he's gotten better. You know, every day in terms of feeling more confident. Everything's about confidence, right? Being confident with that injury. So probably not going to play in the Florida a and game, if you had to guess right now. Who's that? Day-Day. We fully expect him to play in Florida a Gene Mackett said with us the other day that he spoke with you in regard to the court to Drake and Jacoby, and he said there's going to be no holding back in terms of what we throw at those guys, like defensively. Like, I mean, can you assess what you've seen from your quarterbacks and what you've been trying to throw at them to, to get them ready? Yeah, we don't, we don't go, you know, to be honest with you, you know, we, we're just trying to install our side. So, you know, they've done a great job. The quarterbacks have been unbelievable. I mean, they're putting the balls in unbelievable small windows that we can't even get to. Um, and I love to see that. We need a great quarterback, and we'll have a great quarterback. But um, we don't really do anything defensively based on what, you know, the quarterbacks can handle. And Phil and I think we're on the same page. You know, we're all saying, hey, I'm going to do this today. You know, are you good with that? Are you ready for that? Yeah, we need to see it. We're probably not ready for it. We need to see it anyway. Uh, and those are the things that, you know, the quarterbacks are getting exposed to. Uh, but we're trying to, you know, install at our own pace and really not based on you know, what, they're, what they're ready for. We've got time for one more if you need one. Coach Warren, you know, obviously he's like, I guess you're a co-defense coordinator at number two. What do you like about how he coaches the secondary? What do you think he adds to this defense and how you structure it and scheme and stuff? Structure. <laughs> he's a military, like, he's like, it's <laughs> There's no gray with this dude. Like he is, uh, he's a phenomenal teacher. Um, he is uh, as structured and to the point as you can be, but he's really, really good with players. Um, he's not going to bend on certain things. I mean, this is the way it's going to be done. This is the way we do it. Um, you know, he's, a, he's a phenomenal teacher, phenomenal coach, but he holds him accountable. That's the thing back there. If you don't hold guys got accountable right now, you're going to see a lot of bombs, a lot of balls over your head. And so we hold those guys accountable. He holds those guys accountable, and he does a great job of teaching them, you know, all of the intricacies of coverages. Uh, he's just, you know, he's one of the smartest young coaches I've been around. All righty. Is that good? Thanks, gang.